Let's do it. This is 46-year-old Clifford Burns, who 51 minutes prior to this moment drove up to his estranged wife's house in Warren County. Once he got there, he forced his way inside and attacked both his wife and his stepdaughter with a 17-inch tactical hunting knife. 22-year-old Megan Jenkins suffered serious injuries to her left arm but managed to survive. 42-year-old Patricia Burns wasn't so lucky. She was stabbed five times in the torso and pronounced dead the moment she arrived at the hospital. Seven minutes later, Clifford Burns showed up at the Warren County Police Station to hand himself in. Clifford, you gotta bear with me. I don't have my glasses on, alright? I know my rights and everything. You don't have to even read it. Just give me my charges. I'm pleading not guilty and I want to be put in a cell. You have the right to remain silent. So I'll sign your name right I there. I sign my name to nothing. Okay. When this broad can do this on Christmas, fuck me in the ass like this, and when's my last straw, I'd rather live in prison. Over the next 5 hours, 13 minutes, and 42 seconds, Clifford Burns will achieve something quite remarkable, which is the fact he somehow manages to employ every single ego defense mechanism known in psychodynamic literature. He will essentially blame everyone and everything on his current situation apart from himself, and in the process, shut down critical parts of his own defense that he will later attempt to use in court. Hey, what's up? Do you know when a woman snaps you and keeps your kids away from you? What it does to a man? That you work and pay for your kids your whole fucking life? Cliff had two daughters with the woman he just murdered, a 15 and 16 year old. One was out shopping during the attack, while the other witnessed the attack and called 911. Cliff will bring them up a lot to say how much he loves them, but it's important to note they were both absolutely terrified of him. He was abusive to everyone in his family, and his biological daughters were no exception. They hadn't seen him in over a year up to this date, and essentially wanted nothing to do with him. Then the Bacchus brothers rigged the charges when that fucking guy goes over and shoots my old lady's house up and beats the fuck out of her, and he gets misdemeanors, you cocksuckers. Fuck you, motherfucker. He was talking about his kids 12 seconds ago, and now out of absolutely nowhere, he's going off on whoever the Bacchus brothers are. So here's the context. Patricia was married to Cliff for 15 years. She left him in 2010 after suffering nonstop domestic abuse. Two months later, she started dating a firefighter named Ted Bacchus. The two fell in love, but argued a lot, and one of the arguments led to Ted firing one round from his gun into the ceiling of Patricia's bedroom. Patricia then... What the fuck is going on in America, bro? N-word warning? Okay, so yeah, okay, he's gonna say the N-word. It's fine. Like, saying it is not fine, but like, contextually, it's appropriate. I mean, it's inappropriate, but it's not ban-worthy. Fuck, you know what I mean. tried forcing him out of the house, at which point Ted pushed her into the kitchen counter and then onto the floor, causing her to hit the back of her head. Ted then left, and Patricia went to the emergency room where she was treated for bruising to the head and lower back. She reported the incident, and Ted pleaded guilty in exchange for six misdemeanors, which caused some controversy, as many thought the charges were too lenient, and there was speculation that he was given special treatment because he had two brothers in the local police force at the time. It's quite the story, and Cliff will cling on to this story for dear life. He will claim it's the reason he explodes into these uncontrollable rages at the mere thought of Ted Bacchus. Yet as this video plays out, you'll start noticing the true source of the animosity, which as many of you will have already guessed, is jealousy. He will give himself away on this element multiple times without realizing. He'll also initiate this item of subject matter in the most random and creative ways that at times will make what he's talking about virtually incomprehensible. So we've had to create this notification for the more disorienting moments he brings it up. You know what happened up there. All misdemeanors, nine of them, when he shot the house up with an unregistered handgun. Do you know who Teddy Bacchus is? If I ever could get my hands on him, I'd fucking kill him. 
I'm a fucking man in every aspect, motherfucker. The fucking game. I gotta reframe myself because I'm really, I can't even take it no more. The two officers aren't the interrogators. They're just watching Cliff so he doesn't hurt himself or damage property. The actual interrogator will arrive shortly. You know what it is. I love the broad. She took everything from me. My lawyer called me today and said I'm going to jail for a violation of not paying child support. This dude straight up sounds like every guy from Boston. Based on the information of this violation, he was facing somewhere between 3 to 15 days in jail. Paid his punt 250 a fucking week. I lost everything. My fucking business, all my vehicles, and my fucking house. I'm whittled up to a $600 apartment while this cunt runs around my fucking money. His freelance business had been on the decline for the last five years, which is the actual reason for everything he just mentioned. The Bacchus brothers rigged his charges, and this is what I heard because I know everybody in the town. Okay. The, the man that built the fucking town hall told me he was going to lose his gun fucking, his hunting license, so they didn't give him felonies. You did that shit down in Albany, you still wouldn't be out of jail today. They would have fucked you up. This is the Wild West, man, and I'm a wild motherfucker, ain't I now? In the more common circumstance, when someone is facing the inevitability of spending the next several decades in prison, the more grandiose elements of their character tend to dissipate. The nature of their situation rapidly sets in the feelings of anguish and despair, leaving not much room for anything else. Least of all the more extravagant, or perhaps fraudulent aspects to one's character. This guy's Cliff is very opposite. much an exception. He clings on to a particular aspect of his personality that we can only describe as Rambo Cliff. The second concept so regurgitated that it literally needs its own notification. The moniker is inspired by a well-known franchise centered around a highly capable special forces operator, and it was chosen to encapsulate Cliff's varied attempts to appear tough and intimidating. This ranges from his deadly skills at unarmed combat, to his proficiency with a firearm, and operational effectiveness in the mountainous regions of the United States. You would have loved to have a motherfucker like me in Iraq, wouldn't you? I got them fucking tile heads. It's worth noting that Cliff never served a single day in the military. Oh, dude, this is... Oh, my God, I love this man. I love Cliff. Cliff is literally every American, dude. Every fucking Amerabrain dickhead in my fucking chat. But how dare you fucking disrespect the military, you fucking... I don't know. Am I allowed to say the T word? Even though it's, like, directed at me most of the times? I don't want to risk it. Anyway... You know, you, you fucking sand N-word, motherfucker. You do not respect America. Uh. Uh. That's like straight up. Uh, uh, just he never served. LARPing is a fucking military guy. It's awesome. Thinks he's like a deadly weapon. I love this guy. He also had no training whatsoever in combat sports. You know this motherfucker's been like, yo, if you fucking sent me down there to Afghanistan with, like, Henry, me and fucking Henry, we would clear that shit out. Joe Biden's doing a bad job. He's doing a bad fucking job. I should be down there. Give me some fucking white monsters, dude. We will fuck that shit up. You know what I'm saying? Taliban, more like Taliban. I'll turn that shit into Talladega Nights, baby. Let's fucking go. Sports or martial arts. Unless you count the made-up variation of kung fu he demonstrates throughout this interrogation, then by the end of the night, he'll have acquired approximately three and a half minutes of experience. I love this country, and it fucking did me wrong. Fucking wrong! I'm gonna tell you what listen it is. Bring the Bacchus in, brothers, and I'll fight them one-on-one -on -one with one fucking hand. I'll break both their fucking jaws right off them. I believe you. Do you believe me, motherfucker? I, I can see you're very passionate. You want to see? There it is, white power. That's what I believe in. The Irish. You guys, you deal with weapons every day. I had AK-47s, AR-15s at my disposal. I could have made this a war. You want to know what my mindset was? Take her out, spray paint the building, let's play back his boys, and take him in the mountains. You would have to drop a fucking platoon in for me! A platoon, brothers! I kept the war, I came here and did the right thing, I turned myself in. I'll go to prison. Listen, you guys, I gave my children everything. Victoria fucking Secrets and their fucking 15. Abercrombie, Nikes, American Eagle. Sure. What do you fucking think I don't know the names? You know how fucked up I am right now? 
Because I love my wife and I love my kids and I did right by that bitch. I met her in a strip club. Next thing I know, this cocksucker, I'm, I'm traveling in this unit every day. Two hour fucking commute and he's fucking my wife. Hell of a choice in men, the fucking scumbags live.